what your goodness does. Sing all things. You make all things, all things new. You make all things beautiful. Jesus, I rose again to feed the dead. And now I'm here. You make all things, all things new. Look at me. I'm dancing alive. 
Give me 
Before I dive in today, I really felt in my heart to begin to pray today for a, for a new building. And this is amazing. We're grateful to God that we get to use this. Uh, but, but we are believing for our own home. We are believing for our own church home uh, that is in the vicinity of Kumra. And, uh, and this is amazing. We, we love it. We're blessed by it. But, uh, but, but, I, but I just I got a fresh sense as I walked in the door today. We've got to begin to pray and believe for a new building. How many got faith to believe for a new building today? Come on, let's pray. Father, we just thank you that you have a home for your church. And we just thank you, Lord God, for the right location. We thank you for the right facility. We thank you, Lord God, for provision. We thank you, Lord God, that you have a home for your church. We thank you for the kind of place that would disciple, uh, disciple thousands, that would see nations one. We thank you for the kind of place where we could, where we could care for the needs of the people. Thank you for the kind of place where we could raise up a, a, a generation of young people on fire for God. We thank you, Lord God, for that home that you've got in store for us. And we pray that in agreement in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. 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 If you have a Bible with you, I want you to turn with me to the book of Joshua chapter 1. We're going to begin reading in verse 2. Thank you, Alpha. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 2. And the, the title of my message today, the series that we've, we started last week, is called The Joshua Generation. I need you to turn to someone next to you and say, you're the Joshua generation. You are the Joshua generation. And the Joshua generation are the generation that possess promises. They are the people that inherited the promised land. And, uh, and I believe right now this is the word for our church. Joshua chapter 1 verse 2. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, now then, you and all these people, get ready. Somebody shout, get ready. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. Uh, no one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. I will never leave you, and I will never forsake you. Be strong. Somebody shout, be strong. Be strong and courageous. Because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. I love the fact that prosperity and success does not come from the right networks, does not come from the right relationships, does not come from the right opportunities. Prosperity and success comes from doing everything that God calls you to do. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, uh, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua ordered the officers of, people, of the people, go through the camp, tell the people, get ready. Three days from now, you'll cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land your God is giving you for your own. Before I continue today, can we also welcome all of those who are watching online now? We've got people watching right now from Sydney, our Sydney locations, our New Zealand locations, and online campus. A big welcome and a big shout out to you today. This passage of Scripture is an incredibly important passage of Scripture because this is the transition uh, for the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel have for 40 years been meandering around the wilderness. They came out of Egypt, and they're just walking around the wilderness. They're just kind of, uh, they were close to it, but they weren't there. They're just walking around the wilderness. And then God says to Joshua, Joshua, now's the time to go. Somebody shout, Go. Now is the time for you to go into the promised land. But then he begins to encourage him with some things that he's going to need when he gets to the promised land. And today there are a few thoughts that I want to share with you as, as it relates to what you need to be able to enter into the promised land. How many know that all of them could have had the promised land? It was promised to them, the promised land. It was theirs, but not all of them inherited it. Did you know it's possible to have a promise and not inherit it? Yeah. It's possible to have a word over your life and not fulfill it? Yeah. It's possible for God to say things that He desires for you and not receive it fully? 
God begins to speak to Joshua and he begins to teach him some lessons that I want to share with us today. And one of the first things that he begins to say to him is, Joshua, Moses is dead. In other words, Joshua, you can't do things like you used to do them. You can't, you can't think the way you used to think. You can't behave the way that you used to behave. Moses is dead. I'm glad that God said to Joshua, Moses is dead, because God is saying to Joshua, Joshua, I don't need you to be like Moses. I need you, Joshua, to be like Joshua. I need to encourage somebody in this room. You don't need to be like anybody else to be and do what God's called you to do. You don't have to be like your parents. You don't have to be like your friends. You don't have to be like your pastor. You can be who God's called you to be. And if you be who God's called you to be, then you're going to possess the promise. So there he is. He says, Moses is dead. And then he goes on with this, with this incredibly important phrase. He says, now then you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan. And he gives them a key as it pertains to getting ready. He then says, Moses, uh, so Joshua verse 6, be strong and courageous. I need somebody to know today that it's going to take some courage to enter into the promised land. I need somebody to know today that it's going to take some strength to enter into the promised land. You're going to need some courage from God. The word courage comes from the Latin word core, which means heart. So courage literally means strength of heart. It's having the strength to do what is right in the face of fear. Undertaking an overwhelming difficulty or pain despite the imminent and unavoidable presence of fear. It's more than a quality. Courage is not a quality. People aren't just born naturally with courage. Courage is a state of mind. It is the willful choice to fight regardless of the consequence. That's why we love heroes. That's why we love people like uh, Will, uh, uh, William Wilberforce. He, he's, the guy, he, he's the guy who bought, uh, who ended slavery. He's the guy who fought against, uh, against you know, all of his political enemies, and he brought about the victory. That's why we like guys like him, because they had courage. That's why we, we look to people like Nelson Mandela, because Nelson Mandela stood against apartheid, a racist system. He stood against it for 27 years, went to jail. That's why we respect him, because in the middle of that situation, he had courage. Somebody shout courage. We look to heroes who do the right thing in spite of the circumstances. He had courage. And, 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 and then it goes, it goes on here, uh, when, when God says to Joshua, Joshua, be strong and courageous. You're going to need some courage to enter into the promised land. Most psychologists tell us that fear is one of the biggest drivers in our lives. How many would believe that to be true? I actually think even in this current climate, it's kind of getting worse. With the isolation, with COVID, everything that's happened, it's like, it's like you know, fear becomes one of the biggest drivers in our lives. Studies have shown that fear is the basis of our first memories. Uh, for many of us children, you know, uh, children are afraid of the dark. There's, there's that sense of fear, loud noises. Uh, one of the biggest challenges of living a story we're telling is, is that fear has an effect over our lives. But how much, uh, how much of what we do or don't do or don't say has to do with fear? And I want to encourage you today that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and a spirit of love and a spirit of sound mind. If you believe that today, shout amen. amen. God is giving us courage. So the first thought that I want to share with you today as it pertains to inheriting the promised land is number one, God is the source of courage. The great thing is that sometimes when we have moments where we don't feel full of courage, we have a God who is the source of courage. God gives us courage. Joshua 1 verse, four, uh, sorry, Joshua chapter 1 says, No one shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. Isn't it a, a great reassuring thought? That even in the middle of challenge, God is still with you. He says, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. He goes on and says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why? Because the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. One of the things that my, uh, you know, um, my youngest daughter, Annalisa, 
she'll be upstairs and, you know, and, and we're all upstairs in our bedrooms and she, you know, she has to go downstairs to get something. The first thing she'll do, she'll come to me and she'll say, she'll say, Daddy, can you come with me? Can you come with me downstairs? Why do you want me to come with you downstairs? I said, you know, it's fine. It's safe. There's no one down there. We're, 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 we're in our home. It's fine. She said, oh, Daddy, I, I'm, I'm scared. I just, I just need you to come with me. And so what happens then, of course, then dad has to get up out of the comfort of his bed, walk downstairs with the child to go downstairs, and the child wants a glass of water. You stand there, get the glass of water for the child, only to walk the child back upstairs. What is it? What, what, what's the reason that she's doing it? The reason that she's, she's able to do it is because she knows that no matter what she's walking into, no matter what darkness she's walking into, she knows that her father is with her. And I want to encourage you today, no matter what darkness you might be walking into, there is a God who is with you. There is a God who will never forsake you. He is with you. He's in your corner. He is on your side. Romans 8, 31 says, if God is for us, who can stand against us? And I love the fact that, you know, having courage does not mean that you don't have fear. Having courage does not mean that you don't have moments where you're kind of like, you know, uh, concerned. uh, But having But having courage means the proper allocation of fear. Courage is a matter of being afraid of the right things. (laughs) The most frequent command in Scripture is this this passage, fear not. Fear not. When I was growing up, uh, when I first got saved as a Christian, everybody, there was this thing, uh, this, this popular catchphrase that said, fear God. And everybody used to have it on their cars, bumper stickers, fear God, fear God, fear God. Everybody was like, fear God, fear God. And I used to read that and go, oh, man, well, you've got to be afraid of God. And that's not what it means. It doesn't mean be afraid of God. It means that understanding that God is for you, understanding that God is with you, understanding that he's never left you or forsaken you. So if God is for us, who can stand against us? Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. When we understand that God is a source of courage, then no matter what we're facing, we know that God is with us. I love the fact that even, uh, I've seen it even outplayed in our church. La- at the end of last year, Mia, who's, my, who's been my assistant for uh, a couple of years, Mia came to me and she said, Pastor Dan, I believe that the Lord's calling me to take a step of faith. And I said, that's fantastic. What, what, you know, what, what, what's he saying to you? He said, he, he's saying to me that I need to leave this job and go to nursing. I said, get behind me in the name of Jesus. You, know, you can't leave this job. No, and she began to say, no, no, I, I feel like the Lord's telling me that I need to actually step out of work and go back to school and complete my nursing degree because before I had children, I was doing my nursing degree, and now my children are growing up, and I, I, I need to finish my nursing degree. And, of course, we began to bless her. thought that was the ma- most amazing thing. But I want you to know it takes courage to step out of the normal. It takes courage to step out of the routine. It takes courage to go back to school. And she went back to school. But I know this to be sure. The reason that she had courage is because she understood that God is a source of all courage. Craig Rochelle says it like this. When you realize God is for you, you don't fear what happens to you because you know God is working in you. Let me say that again. When you realize God is for you, you won't fear what happens to you because you know that God is working in you. Somebody shout courage today. I'm, I'm, I'm prophesying today that somebody's going to have courage to step into that new business venture. Somebody's going to have courage to start that uh, new job. Somebody's going to have courage to be who God's called them to be. Somebody's going to have courage to lead a family group. Somebody's going to have the courage to step into lifestyle. Somebody's going to have the courage to join the worship team. Somebody's going to have the courage to do what God's called them to do. Somebody shout courage. God is the source of courage. The second thought then as it pertains to inheriting the promises of God, is that we've got to step into God's identity. Step into God's identity. God begins to encourage Joshua, Joshua, be strong, be strong and courageous, be strong, be strong. And I spoke about this a little bit last week. He begins to put into him God identity. He keeps speaking his word. Joshua, you're strong. Joshua, you were strong. Joshua, you're courageous. Joshua, you you can do it. Joshua, you're the man. And at some point, Joshua has to step into that identity. See, my friends, it doesn't matter what God says about you. 
It matters most what you say about you. It doesn't matter what, what dreams God has for your life. It matters if you can accept those dreams and step into that God-given identity. He steps into his identity. And the amazing thing that God begins to take Joshua on this journey is that God begins to take Joshua on this journey of remembering who he was. The first thing he did was he got him to reenact the, the events of, of, of the Red Sea. God took Joshua and got Joshua to part, a, part the Jordan River, just like they did for Moses. Then God, uh, God took Joshua and he, got, he gets them to perform the, celebrate the Passover, just like they did 40 years ago. What's happening is that God is reminding Joshua of who he is. And I want to remind some people of who you are, of what God has saved you from, of what God has brought you out from. God has done a great work in your life, but we must step into God's identity. You are not who you were. You are who you are, who God says you are. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone. Somebody shout, the old is gone. And the new has come. Turn the person next and say, you are a new creation. You are not who you were. You are not your mistakes. You are not your past. You are not, if, if, if Jesus is alive in your life, if Jesus is the Lord of your life, then you are a new creation. Yesterday is dead and gone. God is, if God is in your life, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Joshua had to step into God's identity. The question is, what identity are you accepting for your life? Are you accepting, well, I'm, 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 I've always been like this, so I'm always going to be like that. Are you accepting that fact that, you know, my, my, my family is like this, so I'm always going to be like that. My friends are like this, so I'm always going to be like that. Or are you accepting God's identity for you? God, if God is, God is for you, not against you. You are the head and not the tail. You are above only and not beneath. You can do all things through Christ who is your strength. Step into God's identity. And number three, if the keyboardist could join me. Number three. Big vision. I love that new song. By, how many love that new song, by the way, this morning? That was amazing. I love that song, but it spoke about vision. But point number three, big vision takes small steps. Did you know that big vision, doing big things with your life, takes small steps? Many of us want to arrive at the end immediately. But it always takes small steps. It begins with small steps to do big things. God says to Joshua, Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot. Every place where you set your foot. As I have promised Moses. God says to Joshua, Joshua, just take the small steps wherever you are. And he takes a small step. And he takes another small step. And he takes another small step. He sends the spies out. He takes a small step. He gets the people ready. He takes a small step. Then one day he says, okay, guys, we're going to cross now. And he begins to cross. And we know the story because eventually Joshua inherits the promised land. He takes over Jericho. He takes the whole thing. But the whole thing didn't start with a big step. It always starts with small steps. It started with the very first step. So the question today is, friend, what step can you take? God's calling me here. I've got this vision for my life. Well, what step can you take? God's got this great thing for me. So what small step can you take? About eight years ago, and some of you have heard this story, but about eight years ago, we were cruising around the Gold Coast on holiday, on long service leave, and God began to speak to us but moving to the Gold Coast and planting a church. I'm a Wellingtonian, born and bred. Never, ever, ever imagined leaving Wellington. Didn't want to leave home. But God began to speak to me. And he said these words, Daniel, we can take this place. So it seemed so daunting. It seemed so huge. But I remember going back to Wellington and just taking a small step. The first small step I, I took was I went and talked to my pastor. And what do you think? 
And then I talked to my mum because I, th- I said, oh, man, there's no way I could ever leave my mother. Talked to my mum and she said, no, that's okay. You go, son. Talk to my family. Talk to my wife. Take small steps. Then the next small step was that we sold everything we had. Booked a flight. Moved to the Gold Coast. February 2013, landed on the Gold Coast with a dream that God wanted to do something great. Didn't know anybody. Took a small step. Gathered a few people. Started with 20 people. 20 of us gathered in a room. Then we decided to take the next small step of having a launch service. We decided for the launch service, we put 50,000 flyers out. Just put all these flyers out. What were we doing? We were taking small steps. I want to encourage you that big vision takes small steps. But when you take those small steps, if it's a God dream, it'll always bless many people. It'll always bless other people. Having a vision that doesn't involve blessing other people is not a God vision. Having a vision to, you know, have a, have a, you know you've got this vision. Of, I'm going to have this nice car. That's cool. Have a nice car. But how does that bless other people? You've got to get a bigger vision. How does your vision bless other people? And if you take the small steps, then you can fulfill the big vision. Because big vision always takes small steps. Maybe the small step is like, like me did, going back to school. Maybe the small step is launching out into that, into that new business. Maybe that small step is going to university. Maybe that small step is going to do, doing lifestyle. But whatever that, that small step is for you, my friend, can I encourage you that big vision always comes as a result of taking small steps. So what small things do you need to take? The Bible says that if we are faithful with little, we'll be faithful with much. So what's the step that God's got put in front of you? And I promise you this, my friend, you take those steps, you take those small steps, then you'll inherit the promised land in the name of Jesus. Come on, you receive that word today. Come on, give God a praise today. You receive that. And even right now, I just sense that across this church and across this congregation, I just sense that there's a rising up of a Joshua generation. A rising up of a company of people who are possessing promises. There are many people in this room who have been looking at the promised land for a long time. And the days of looking at it are over. The days of possessing it are now. These are the days of possessing promises in the name of Jesus. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads? Father, I just thank you for this company of people. and Lord, I just thank you for every single person, Lord God, that, that is called to the Joshua generation. I'm thanking you for for moms and dads. I'm thanking you for young people. I'm thanking you for grandparents. I'm thanking you, Lord God, that no matter what phase and stage of life, we can possess promises. That it's not too late. That we haven't missed it. We've not been disqualified. But God, we can receive what you have for us in the name of Jesus. And so I declare even right across this church, I declare courage. Courage. That God, you're the source of our courage. We wouldn't be hemmed in by fear. Wouldn't be hemmed in by what other people think. Lord God, but we would follow you wholeheartedly. You are the source of our courage. That God, I'm praying praying for people to step into their God-given identity. To take small steps towards the fulfillment of big vision. Oh God, I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for this incredible church. I thank you, Lord God, for the lives that are being changed, for the souls that are being saved, and for the disciples that are being made. Lord, I thank you for that. In the precious and in the powerful name of Jesus. With every eye closed and every head bowed. Now, if this message was for you, I'd love to pray for you right now. Fellow, like this is the word for you. Just quickly, with every eye closed, every head bowed, lift your hand. I'd love to pray with you. Hands going up all over the room. Yeah. Lord, right now, I declare that your word, I declare that your word would be set in every heart of every hand lifted. That, Lord God, we are who you say we are. I'm thanking you for, for, for the courage to be different, the courage to stand out, the courage to be who you've called us to be. I'm thanking you, Lord God, even now, you're illuminating the steps. The Bible says the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. I thank you, Lord God, for those steps. 
And I thank you for your a God-given identity. God, we thank you for that. I declare that over your church. And I declare that over your people. I thank you for that in the precious and in the powerful name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Come on, can we just thank God? Can we give God a shout of praise today? Amen. Amen. You're amazing. Well, God bless you. You prayed that prayer. We're so proud of you. And we'd love to do everything we can to help you take the next step with God. So I want to encourage you to go to our website and check that out. We'd love for you to join one of our family groups. Um, we've got groups that for every age, every stage, every location. And, uh, and so I'd love for you to join a group. Don't do life alone. Now, now this is, it's about learning and, and building relationships with one, one another and learning about God. So I want to encourage you to do that. And you can build life-giving relationships. And, uh, and the second thing I'd love for you to consider is consider Lifestyle. Lifestyle is our mentoring program. Lifestyle is where you really learn about who you are in God, what you're born for. And we help you just discover your gifts and help you dis- to discover who you are, who you are called to be. Who, are, who am I is the number one question I get. And Lifestyle helps, helps us to answer that for you from God's Word. And so I want to encourage you to do that. That would be amazing. And church, uh, I want to thank you for your incredible generosity because of your giving lives have changed and uh, and the book of Malachi tells us to bring the tithe into the storehouse I want to thank you for doing that you've been so generous and because of that we've been able to see God do such powerful powerful things we see lives change every week we see we see souls saved we see people reached all around the world because of your generosity so I want to thank you for doing that let me pray for you right now Father I just pray for everybody who's watching Lord God I thank you Lord God for this incredible church again we're praying for those who are in Sydney for those who are in lockdown, for those who are in Fiji and Auckland, Lord God. And we just know, Lord, in the middle of that, Lord, you're the, you're, the, you're, the, you're the calm in the storm. That, Lord God, in the midst of uncertainty, you are certain. Lord God, I, I thank you, Lord, for your peace. I thank you for your presence to be with them. And I declare your blessing over them in the name of Jesus as we put first things first. And everybody said, Amen. Well, God bless you. Have the most incredible week. If this has been helpful to you, share this with your friends. Share this right now on whatever platform you're watching it on. And, uh, and that would be amazing. So we can continue to reach people with the life-giving message of Jesus. God bless you. Have an incredible week. We'll see you soon.